list. No, I so did not expect that listening to NASCAR twice on the radio yesterday. Because I turned on the radio to listen to the basketball tournament. And they all they had on was NASCAR. And then on the way home, I thought, well, maybe, you know, they'll have some basketball news to, you know. And I'm like, why are you doing that? You already checked to see if Arizona went to the second round. I was just turned on the radio. And they're still doing NASCAR. Okay, I think it was they were talking about, you know. So I'm picking up on these guys, you know, like Ricky Rudd and Dell Earnhardt Jr. And, I, and I'm picking up on these mass. It's past, present, and future operate at the same time. And a lot of people that are in NASCAR are very religious people and say a lot of prayers connecting to the line of King David. So they would have, if they're good people and they really care about their family and they care about this planet and they care about God, they're going to connect and they're going to get me. And they're going to need to, it's going to need a trigger through the mind control networks, the influence and things, because everything's pretty much manipulated and controlled through Wi-Fi transmissions and receptions, and it's very distracting, so it's hard for me. So cut me a break. You guys are distracted by it. You guys all buy stuff on TV, show up and buy their Christmas presents when you're supposed to buy Christmas presents, kill people if they don't agree with your political and social and religious beliefs. I mean, get, cut me a break here. So I listened to 570, and I picked up, and I got these guys. And uh, I'm picking up on them spiritually because they were in my hemisphere, in my brain. And uh, they're trying to get through, but it's hard to get through. Well, especially with Jennifer Lopez. In the, that's true. I, I, I'm sorry, guys. Okay. You're in a room. <clears throat> All right. And Taylor Hart Jr. is over there. Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd are over there, and da 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 da. Now Jennifer Lopez comes in the room. Are you going to even give a shit if Taylor and Hart Jr. is in the room? It's Jennifer Lopez. What if she's interested in talking to you? What if you get a look at her? A lot. And she's talking to you and you're looking at her and she's looking at you. And she's looking at you like she thinks you're a decent person and she's interested in what you're saying. And she would like to help you do things to make the world better for children. Would you sit there and look at all those NASCAR drivers or would you look at Jennifer Lopez? All the, I'm sorry, I'm King David's nephew. And I'm most like King David on planet Earth. But all those NASCAR Davers, drivers would be like, what were you saying, Ralph? What, I'm sorry, did you see what Jennifer was wearing? <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell your wife, oh, sh it's okay. My wife understands. I'm a man. <laughs> she better understand. Let's all go to Jeff Foxworthy's closet in single file and do it in an orderly fashion. Okay. The Braves are playing. Let's go. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Spring training. Spring training. We're watching spring training, honey. See how the pitchers are doing in spring training. We, we got to go. No, we were not looking at Jennifer Lopez's butt. No, we weren't. We're lying. Of course we're lying. We were looking at her butt. It was in the room. What else were we supposed to look at? Somebody put on TV and put some baseball on at spring training. You see what I'm talking about? No, it's, it's, it, they're NASCAR drivers. Ricky Bobby's not a joke. It's real. Please be 18. Please be 18. <laughs> Oh, this is funny. Oh, my God, guys. How do I get you out of my head? I really don't want to. This is fun. I so did not expect this. I could so hang out with these guys. No, I really could. I could hang out with NASCAR drivers. I always knew I could because what's fun. Well, I grew up with the Ponces, and the Ponces drew stock, drove stock car at the fairgrounds. Tony had a car. Chuck was wanting to get a car. They all did. Yeah, they loved doing stock car driving. Yeah, the Ponces. Yeah, uh, Puerto Rican, Irish kids from Boston who ended up in Guam, ended up, yeah, yeah, L like stock car driving. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's weird. You get guys from from Boston. No way, yeah. From an Irish mother and uncle from Boston who married a Puerto Rican fella who ended up in New Mexico and, like, doing stock car driving. Go figure. How, do, what do you, how many people, would, could you hear a guy in a NASCAR talking like this? It's interesting, isn't it? It's, there's not many NASCAR drivers that come from, you know, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of interesting. But, <laughs> like, Uncle Polly. You know, uh, Uncle Paul. Hey, come get your Uncle Polly. Get your Uncle Paul. Polly, get your Uncle Paul. And, <laughs> that, was Miss, that was Mrs. Ponce. Yeah, she had a, she was Irish. Catholic from Boston who married a Puerto Rican fella and yeah and so you went over to their house and Mrs. Ponce was Irish you know Irish Catholic and married a, a Catholic you know it was, it was it was pretty interesting but yeah no it was very cool it was a, it was a very neat household to go to I was not a racist bigoted stupid I my family was not my family my mom and dad were exceedingly um, racially uh, advanced and intelligent 
You know, I told you my dad in Tennessee with that young man, Melvin, who was a very large black man who was, quote, considered slow and would talk to the white girls and the other guys would want to, like, take him and do bad things to him. My dad would tell him, Melvin is just, he doesn't mean nothing by it. <laughs> Melvin probably did. <laughs> but he's like, he's kind of, Melvin was a big, nice guy that wasn't trying to be too friendly with the girls. It was just the way he was. He probably Melvin was probably no, I don't think so because I don't think he was using it as a as a as a as a tool to manipulate Ralph and the girls because as I told you the story my dad told me about Melvin was that dad Melvin protected dad because there was a large soda machine you know those old soda machines with the glass bottles that you pull them out well he put a quarter a diamond and it didn't work one day and Melvin pulled that soda machine over on himself. And those old soda machines, those old metal soda machines with glass bottles full of sodas, the man literally pulled it over on himself. And so every time my dad got a dime and tried to get a soda, he made sure Melvin wasn't around because Melvin wouldn't let him get a soda from the soda machine because he would grab Ralph and say, Ralph, you can't do that. That thing will jump up over on you. <laughs> okay. So Melvin was definitely had cognitive issues. So he wasn't trying to be too friendly with the white girls. He didn't know any better, and my dad protected him from racially abusive people in Tennessee because he didn't want anything to happen to Melvin because Melvin was a good guy, okay? He wasn't being a jerk, and he wasn't trying to be, quote, be out of place in that society. My dad understood the societal norms and understood what was going on and was trying to keep a young black man safe from racial abuse, okay? My dad's a good guy, all right? And, uh, you know, Carrie Lachlan told me that, too, you know, because my dad watched uh, their dad play Billy Ray when uh, Purvis Atkins. I was watching Mean Machine last night. <laughs> Purvis Atkins is number 17 on the Mean Machine, the one who catches the long-running football and outruns everybody because he can outrun everybody. He was one of the fastest guys in college football. And Purvis Atkins is number 17, the, the good-looking guy holding the basketball who goes up to talk to uh, – uh, Burt Reynolds, and we ain't gonna play. You know that, that's Purvis Atkins. He was an All-American, uh, National Wrestling Champion. Uh, helped lead Charlie Johnson and Bob Gators and Billy Ray Lockin and stuff in the New Mexico State Aggies. They were seven and four his junior year, and his senior year they were undefeated. And both years won the Sun Bowl. So yeah, Purvis Atkins. We're very proud of Purvis Atkins in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And he has gotten into film and he did a lot of, and it was funny for me because i saw that he when i read the thing and saw that he when he got into the hall of fame that he had a film career and he was working on a film career and then i'm sitting there watching that movie last night and i have watched it a bunch of times but then i sit there and looked at the credits and i've been reading the credits to see who everybody is and it boom right there it says at the beginning of the movie and the very first name on the front is because of his name alphabetically parvis atkins you know and sunny six killer the the guy who plays the the native american guy sunny six killer from the university of Washington, who's also, yeah, so I was like, oh my gosh, that's Sonny Six Killer. I know that's Joe Cap, you know, so it was really neat for me to watch the movie because I wasn't paying as close attention to the ex-professional football players in that movie. Um, I'll be back, guys, all right? Blessings and peace.